Hey, what's up everyone out there? I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. Now I want to talk about the Nintendo Switch a little bit more, but on a specific aspect about it. If you guys want to check out my full Nintendo Switch reactions and my opinions on stuff that was straight from the event that happened not too long ago, check out the description box below. I have a link to a React podcast that I did with TheCoalition.com where we pretty much dissect everything that happened during the Nintendo Switch event. But one of the things I want to focus on in this vlog is specifically the paid online service that Nintendo kind of announced at this event. Now, there isn't a lot of different details about it. We don't know the price or any of the other like real big minutiae details about what Nintendo's online services are going to be. But I can tell you right from the very get-go that this is a very bad idea based off the information that we know right now. In case you guys don't know what I'm talking about or maybe you missed this little thing from the actual presentation itself for the Nintendo Switch, here's the basic kind of like rundown. Uh, Nintendo is actually going to have a new online service that's going to start up in the spring and then later on in the year of 2017 is going to become a paid service. We don't know the price or anything of the sort, but basically you're going to need this online service in order to play your games online, much very similar to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One with PSN and Xbox Live respectively. The only other detail that we know about this online service is not only is that it's going to be used in conjunction with mobile devices, smart devices like phones and tablets and stuff, but also that you're going to get one free game or one free kind of like trial demo, and you'll understand why I say that in a second, every single month that's either an NES or a Super NES game that's also going to have additional online components to it. That's pretty cool in premise, but here's the catch 22 however. You'll only be able to play these games for that particular month. Once the month is up, you'll have to purchase those games again from the eShop or the Virtual Console. It's not like PlayStation uh, Plus or like Xbox Live Gold, where you own those games for the entire time that you're still a member of those services. If you're not going to be able to build up a big backlog of Nintendo games, both NES and Super NES, based off of their online services alone. You'll have to get a brand new game every single month, and if you want to continue owning that game for whatever reason, you're going to have to purchase it afterwards at the uh, ending of the month. This is a real bad idea because I feel like it doesn't really offer a lot of value to the customers that are going to be diving into this online service. Paying for online services and the ability to play your games online against other people around the world, that's standard now. If you have PlayStation 4 or Xbox One and you already do this type of thing, you can't really complain about that actual aspect of it. However, you can complain about the type of value and the amount of stuff you're getting for actually being a part of this Nintendo online service. I think that it's a huge mistake to not allow people to build up that library of games where they could just hold on to it and be part of like a big catalog for their Nintendo Switch and rather instead force them not only to kind of renew the different types of games that they get, get different types of games every single month, but also force them to buy them at that point. Granted, these are games are, that are highly available already on the Nintendo eShop, more than likely, or the Virtual Console, or in a variety of different ROMs that are floating around the internet. There's many different ways to play a lot of these different games. However, it's not really kind of in everybody's best interest to really kind of force everybody to pay an additional five, six, maybe even ten dollars for each individual different SNES or NES games that people are more than likely going to go back to multiple times. It might be good business in some retrospect and in some area that we just don't understand just yet, but for everybody else, people like me, people like other Nintendo fans that are on the outside looking in. This seems like a surefire way to turn a lot of people off from the Nintendo Switch and its online service already from the get-go before they've even entered the race with the new console. Again, I just feel like they need to go back to the drawing board and if not abort this entire thing entirely and just go back and look at some of the stuff that PlayStation Plus with PlayStation Network has been doing as well as also Xbox Live and Xbox Live Gold. I feel those are the shining examples because those are the types of services that have been around the longest and seem to have really gotten the idea of providing a lot of good value to their online services besides the need to play your games online or the mandatory nature of having that online component with most of the games tied to your console. Again, this is just my opinion, and I know that we don't know everything about this online service from the very get-go. You best believe, in my opinion, at least a personal prediction of mine, that that service is going to be around $50. Because, again, based off of what we know from PlayStation Network, as well as also Xbox Live, we know those services are around $50 to $60, and they've been going up every once in a while here and there. So I'm pretty sure that Nintendo's going to keep up with that same standard, or at least be along in that same vein to compete with the other two services. What's really going to be telling, though, is if they provide enough stuff that everybody's going to want to jump into, if the online service itself is stable enough, and if people are really going to be playing a lot of these different video games online on the Switch itself, rather than going to one of the other two consoles on the market now. 
But either way, guys, that's just my opinion on the Nintendo Switch and its paid online services. Again, a lot of people are very divided about it. There's a lot of debate about whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. Leave me a comment down below in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about this online service. Are you going to be getting it with your Nintendo Switch this March? Again, the console comes out March 3rd with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Are you going to be diving into that right from the get-go? Or, again, are you probably going to hold off on it until you hear more about the actual service itself? Uh, from what we gather right now, it's going to be free from the very start at the launch of the Nintendo Nintendo Switch, or at least with around that kind of like spring or summer time period, and then later on into 2017 is when it's actually going to turn into a paid service. So I'm hoping that the price point is good, and I'm also hoping that we hear a lot more better news than what we've gotten at this point. Anyway guys, that's all I got for you. I will talk to all of you guys again real soon. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the Gamers with Games channel for all my videos related to video games, all the big news, the Nintendo Switch, and all this other stuff, and peace out, stay epic everybody.